Guys, welcome back to the, the Pajero build video. So, in this video, hopefully, I'm gonna complete and, and build this whole entire Pajero from start to finish. It's nine o'clock in the morning, so what better time to start, eh? Um, now, hopefully, I'll be able to give you a few little hints and tips on you know, things that I've found that help build these uh, Orlando hunters. I've never done one of these Pajero, so you know, you're with me on this as a first time build. Um, but they're all pretty similar, you know, if you've built a, a Defender or a Jeep or absolutely any of them, you'll get the gist of roughly how they go together. So I'm hoping that this one's going to be no different. So anyway, we're going to just dive on in and start on bag A. So I've got all of bag A components out there. Here we go. Right, so um, first steps with this. Um, is to do the front one from the looks of things. You can always tell the difference between the front axle and the rear axle. The front axle is shorter, as you can see there. It's a lot shorter um, because obviously it's got the steering knuckles that go on. Um, so we're gonna crack on with this. Um, like every kind of model, first thing that I'd suggest is when you take the, the bits off, make sure that you've, you've filed it nice and smooth. You know, you don't know no ridges or burrs or bumps anywhere because that can really affect how these cars drive. Um, so first steps first, I suppose, is um, according to the, the thing, we need parts number one and number four. So we're gonna get them off. Um, I always do like to use the old snippy snips. So snip that there, snip that there. And same with the other piece. So once we've done that, like that and um, I always get a tiny little file um, and just make sure that uh, you can sort of see what I'm talking about there but you probably can't see it on this on this video but there's there's tiny little burrs and bumps here yeah? and that that believe it or not will be the difference of it running nice and smooth or not smooth at all so just make sure that you you do actually file the little bits where it was attached to the um, the bit of plastic that we've just cut off. And that's all it takes, just literally a couple of rubs. Go over it with your nail, make sure that, make sure it's nice and smooth, and you're good to go. So let's do the same again with this one. Plus it looks better as well. <laughs> and that one there done. So, once we've done that, we have to go to this bag here, which is um, the shafts themselves, those would be the drive shafts. And you want the smaller one, just move that out. And we're gonna need to go to this bag here, and whack that open. Let's pour these out. Now there's some teeny tiny bits in this, and you gotta try not to lose them, to be honest with you, because if you lose them, it won't work, obvious. So, um, some of the bits that we're gonna need as well is you're gonna need some of the bearings. And there's two different sizes of bearings. You've got these little teeny tiny ones. I think they're about six mil wide. Um, and then you've got the slightly bigger ones. which look more like an eight mil size bearing. Um, so we'll dump both of them out just because I don't actually need these larger ones yet, but we'll need them shortly. Whoever shortly is, poor little guy. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and throw one of them in there. Use your screwdriver just to uh, magnetise, doesn't it? It's magnetised. I don't want a magnetised screwdriver for this. And you just seat it in place, just like that. And once that's done, again, do the same again on the outside one. There we go. Put one in there as well. So this next jobber is going to be one of these. Right, and what we've got to do, I'm going to need to get my And get yourself some some pliers for this next job um, and basically find one of these C clips it's just how I do it anyway stick the 
C-clip on the pliers, try and make sure it's centralized with the pliers. Um, get your piece and you can see that there's a, a, a cut out where it fits. Click like that. Okay, so that's on there like that. Lovely. And, and then what you've got to do, you've got to get one of these, right? And this will be going on and the gear will be facing towards the um, C clip that we've just put on. And there is a tiny little hole, really tiny hole. And you've got to line that up and you get one of these tiny, tiny little pins. Okay, finally. Um, right, so once that's in place, get your rubber O-ring and that slips over the top and that o-ring will hold that pin in place genius genius look at that so that's now in place and once that's been done uh, our next step is basically we're going to need a bearing on this side and we're going to need a bearing on this side bish bosh like that um, and then we come over to our now I have a piece that we've already put bearings in, well, one of them stayed in. And you're gonna get, get this gear. That's gonna go through that one there. Bosh. Um, and then bearing will go on the other side. That keeps falling off. Boom. And once that's done, don't forget, let's put a little bit of grease inside of it. That'll do. It's gonna get a little bit of grease, tiny little bit of grease. It's only a tiny little thing, so a bit of grease. And a bit of that on that gear. And then the same with this gear here. If you wanna know where to get this grease from? Um, I believe Drone Junkie sells it. Um, on his website, it's only a couple of quid for a little pot. Um, so you don't need much grease on it because there's not much of it. So one thing that you do have to do is pay attention to the orientation of these kind of things, yeah? So you can see which way round this thing here is going, and then you can see which way round, there you go, you see which way round that bit is, and you can see which way round your gear's got to be. So. I believe it would only go one way anyway. Um, so we're holding it this way round and your gear is going to be this way round, okay? I'm gonna stick that in the hole, hopefully. You've got to make sure, there you go, make sure your bearings are located. And once that's in place, be able to give it a quick little test, yep, that's spinning. Um, and next jobber, get your top piece, now all that stuff's in there. And once again, put that on there, boom, just like that. Now the screws that you're gonna use for this are the 1204. So you go over to our bags and we find 1204s. Now with the screws on these axles, make sure it's kind of like a, if you do them up too tight, it will be wrong. If you don't do them up tight enough, it will be wrong. Um, so yeah, it's sort of, when they're done, they're done, you know? Just don't go all the way with one. Do a little bit at a time, just to make sure that it's seated correctly. up a little so boom boom and that's that that bit there done so now that's done next step is we need to decide believe it or not already how we're going to mount the servo are we going to mount it 
on the axle or are we going to mount it on the body I'll just show you what i mean so you can either mount the servo um, using two different pieces bosch bosch onto there yeah they've gone ahead and chassis mounted it so do you know something we're going to chassis mount it as well so it we will we'll chassis mount it so from what we won't have to do we don't have to use this bit okay um let's just carry on as we are and we'll just use the little bit there so next piece is going to be number five bosch and bosch turn the other side and these are to what the steering knuckle attaches to basically these bits once again you've got to pay attention make sure that the ball ends are facing outwards inwards inwards towards the that's the word inwards and you've also got to make sure that the holes are aligned there we go and then for the screws for this um, we will be using 1003 1003 these teeny tiny ones man You don't really want to over tighten any of these bits because it's just plastic. It's just plastic. Um, now, once you've done that, um, another part we're going to need, like we said earlier this part here there's two of them on there um, obviously one for the front one for the back Let me just make sure everything's tidied up nicely and these are attached with i believe it's a 1205 uh, yep 1205 start them screws off okay. start both of these screws off in the in the hole so we know that it's going to locate properly. And the orientation is that way. This thing on here. Now what we need to do, this is a fun bit mod. Um, these, the ball head screws. Now these can be okay and they can also be a pain in the butt. This has got to be one of the, the best tools that you can buy um, as an Orlando builder. This is a 0.9 um, Allen key or star drive. I suppose um, you know it's, they do provide you with with an Allen key um, in the kit, but the Allen key is just so so awkward. It's great to finish them off because um, it does fit better. <coughs> so we're going to need anyway. We're going to need one in here. Do not over tighten these because it can't go back and they round off really, really easy. One there, and one there. Okay. And you cut them 
dulu Same on the other side. Make sure they're going nice and square. Not too tight. And now that's done. Um, next step, after we've done all of that stuff, um, is basically we need we need our steering knuckles, one of these. Make sure you cut the end bit off. That went miles. One of them, and one of the other side. Sauce. As always, I like to just make sure that every bit of it that we do doesn't have any burrs on it. Burrs suck. Right, and with these pieces, we're going to need this bag here, which has got inside of it. These things here. Now these will be going through this steering knuckles. It can be a bit of a pain to get in, but make sure you when you're putting it in, obviously it's got to be put in straight, otherwise it will never go in. There we go. Let's seat that home. Ooh. Same with the other side. Let's seat that home. bigger bearings so one bigger bearing gonna go on the outside there just like that and another big bearing to the other side and just like that and once they've been done what we need to do is these have to be facing outwards, okay? And we've got to also a tiny little, um, I don't know, is it a hexagonal hole for your hexagonal shaft? And you've got to line that up like that. And this is the same time as trying to locate both of these little, what do they call them? Steering knuckle knobs. All right, there we go, look at that, boom, boom, boom. Um, and the same for the other side as well. It goes on there, locates on there. Pushing it down and in. Bish, bish, bosh. Just like that. And then once they're done, you now know which way round they, they need to be. Um, and you're gonna need one more of these. One more of these. Ball screws, ball screws. Oh, sounds painful, doesn't it? And then looking at the orientation, you want the standard one on this side. And these things are going to be facing up. Just like that. And then on the other side, it's a double headed ball, uh, ball screw. You call them ball screws, but that sounds like something you put into your genitalia, doesn't it? Um, 
and this one will go on the other side. Lovely. So that is the whole entire of the front axle is pretty much done. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the rear axle off camera. All right. So both of these axles have been done now. Um, the the rear one is obviously it's a lot easier than the front one because um, there's a lot less going on. Uh, but yeah, nice and easy. So next step, according to the book of wisdom is basically all the push and pull rods. Now these rods, um, when you do them, don't worry about measuring them, just, just literally after you've screwed it together, put it onto this, because this size here is correct, that's 22.2 mil, that size there is nine mil, 14 mil, but the, the actual size of the picture itself is correct. So you can just literally hold it up to that and you'll you'll be in the, in the right area, to be honest with you. So I'm gonna crack on, get all of them done. And then we're on to um, motor mounts and gearbox assembly. Right, so we have added all of these push and pull rods or links, whatever you want to call them. Um, like I said before, you don't have to measure them. You just literally hold it up to the picture and that size will be correct. So anywho, um, now we're on this step here, which is bag C. So this is going to be the motor, um, all the gears and the motor plate as well for the bottom. Um, now with this, obviously we're going to need a motor, so I have got one of these um, and I've gone for a, a 200 RPM motor. Um, once again, I've got this from dronejunkie.co.uk um, along with a car as well. So if you want to buy any of these bits, they do sell them at dronejunkie.co.uk. So um, with this, once again, we're going to need a bit of grease as you can see there. Um, and it's all pretty much straightforward as to what we've got to do. So I don't really think you're gonna need much much help with this. Um, the only things that I will say is on this uh, motor mount, um, or the gearbox mount itself, um, these holes here, sometimes they crack when it is that you go putting the screws in. So what I would suggest is if you put the, the ball head screws onto your driver, onto your um, one of those and then heat them up with a lighter not not so they're red hot or nothing like that just so they're sort of too hot to touch you know um, and then when you put them in they tend to sit a lot better um, and they won't crack the part I've heard of other people drilling them out but you know if you're drilling it out you're losing material if you lose material then it's not going to grip as well and um, so what I always do is just heat them up with a lighter as it is that I'm putting them in. Um, what you can do as well is put a, put your Allen key through one side to do this side, and then you've only got a struggle trying to put it in through the other side, if that makes any sense at all. Hopefully it does. Um, so what I'm gonna do is crack on, get this whole page done. Um, I, not say, I don't think there's anything that's, you know, confusing as to, to what to, what to do. Um, so yeah, there we go, let's get this built. Right, that is complete. Um, yeah, it went pretty smooth. Like I say, heat them ball joints up and then and then just almost stick them in the hole and give them a quick little twist and they'll be fine. Um, so that's that done. Uh, I've gone ahead already to this part here and I've started mounting some of the bits. So I've put an LED in the front there um, and the, the step plate um, and a couple of other little bits and bobs. Now this might wind a few of you up, but I'm not gonna be doing all of the LEDs on this. So I'm just gonna keep it as just the white LEDs on the front and just red LEDs on the rear, uh, the SMD LEDs on the rear. Uh, reason for that is I'm gonna most probably be using one of the TS ESC, so TS0001 or TS0002 um, ESCs, and they only allow, obviously, limited, limited lights. So I'll have the four mil lights on the front and the SMDs on the rear. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and probably solder up a couple of the uh, red SMD LEDs for the rear. I'm gonna get that done now, so I've got some got some cable ready. Uh, I'm gonna solder them up, stick them on, pla on place, stick them in place, and um, hopefully that will be this whole entire step, both these pages done. Um, there's nothing really that's, that's overly complex on these. 
Um, it's all straightforward, so I'm sure you guys, if you're building along with me, um, you'll be able to do this. So I'm gonna, like I said, do these LEDs and I'll be back with you. Right, so now I've mounted them LEDs uh, onto the frame. That was all done, nice and easy. Um, next thing is basically getting the two chassis rails stuck together. Um, there's a lot of the 1505s and a couple of 1503 screws um, that have got to be done in place. So what I find easiest with this is basically just do one side, one whole entire side, uh, get everything mounted on one side, and then you can marry the two together. Makes it a hell of a lot easier, otherwise there's no way that you're gonna be able to do it. Um, another thing that you've got to do is get a 2.2 gram servo and just trim up um, these bits here off of it, okay? So you've got to cut 2.5 mil off of each one of them. Um, obviously, make sure that you set the um, intermediate point, as they say, according to the above chart and fix the arm motor, arm of motor. Um, the arm should be vertical to the bottom surface. So basically what they're saying is um, either plug it into an ESC and make sure it's at the center point before you go putting this um, this arm here on. Um, so yeah, I've gone ahead and I've done all of that lot um, and I've stuck all of this lot together and this is what you'll end up with. So all the bits are in place now. Um, everything's good to go, ready to, to start the next step. So like I say, I don't think there's anything really on, on these steps that's, that's overly complicated. Um, just remember to cut them bits off of the 2.2 gram servo and you'll be absolutely fine. So, next step. Next step is gonna be the shocks. I put that through there, and then I screw the top on, um, as well as I add a little bit of grease, like it says, uh, and then put your spring over. Um, and whilst it is that you're pulling out this piece here, and then you can hold that piece there with some pliers, uh, and then you can screw this piece here in place. These two pieces here are basically, they add tension onto the onto the spring itself. Um, it does say there that you've got to make sure that it's 14 mil um, from one side to the other, because obviously where you're screwing this piece here into this piece here, um, you can over screw it and make some of them longer than others. So just make sure that they're all the same size. Um, and you'll be good to go. So it's pretty easy, bish bash bosh, that will be done. Um, and then we've got the drive shafts. Uh, these are pretty fiddly, but once again, if you know there's nothing, do not use over strength. Oh, I've never used over strength before. Um, to set the universal ball due to small spare parts, please be patient when assembling. So yes, I will be patient whilst assembling. Um, but yeah, these things here, they're, they're pretty easy to do. Um, you've just got to make sure that when you're connecting these bits that you don't crack them, basically. Um, it's just all in, all in the twist. Um, but yeah, no, they're pretty easy to do. So I'm sure you guys will be able to achieve this without, without any guidance. Um, and then after that, what we've got to do is go click, click, um, on and click click onto these particular bits here and then once you've done that you can add your um, drive shaft that's the word I'm looking for add your drive shaft and then click the rest of it together and then basically you will be at the stage of a rolling chassis and then it's all up to the detail point so we're nearly done with this thank goodness eh right guys look at this so we have now got a rolling chassis and um, so all the the shocks are on, uh, the drive shafts are on, all the links are on as well. Everything seems to be pretty good. Um, so next step is uh, body, really. We've got to sort the body out, choose what paint we're going to do, give it a lick of paint, uh, and then we can add the ESC and the receiver, and we can attach our um, lights to the um, ESC as well, and it will be pretty much 100% complete. So next step, is adding all the details but obviously I want to paint this before we add all these details so I'm gonna I'm gonna think about what color to do I really don't know what to what color I'm gonna do this year <laughs> I haven't got a clue but um, hopefully I will choose a good color and uh, yes yes it'll be great so um, yeah let's pick a color right guys so I have 
gone ahead and um, I've done all the electrics. Uh, I've done it off camera, obviously. Um, basically, I've used a TS0001 ESC. And I don't know if you can see or not, but I've actually desoldered all of the all of the points that were on there. I've desoldered them and actually put them upwards um, through the board just to just to neaten it up a little bit. So all my cables are now running across there. I've used an FSBS6 um, receiver, which is it's actually a six-channel receiver. Now I'm I'm going to change this out because this is this is way too overkill. I'm waiting for some receivers to come all the way from China. Um, but they're not going to be here till late next month. So I thought, yeah, sod it, let's just use this uh, FSBS 6, which is for my Flysky GT5 controller. Um, but yeah, I will be changing that out at, at a later date. Um, but yes, for now, we've added the TS0001 ESC, uh, and I've mounted the switch onto a bit of plastic card there, so it's accessible from the bottom. Hopefully I'll be able to access the um, the balance lead there so I can charge it off a balance lead charger without taking the lid off constantly. Um, I've done the LEDs, soldered them in place so I've got the, the front LEDs and the rear LEDs are in place as well um, and I've actually gone ahead and I've finished this so I have I have painted it, I've chose a colour so I've spent ages, uh, I even asked a whole bunch of people on Facebook uh, what, what colour do they think that I should do this, this Pajero did have some people say do it red, some people say do it green. Um, it's you know it's it's one of the hardest parts if you're asking me. Uh, if you if you've not already got a colour in mind, choosing a colour it's really difficult for me. Um, but yeah, I asked a few people and there was one guy who, who did come out with the idea of why not do a metallic blue and silver. So top half of the car blue, bottom half silver, just like in the picture basically. Um, but obviously blue, not red. Um, so I've gone ahead and I've done that, uh, and I've added all of the all of the little details that we've got to do. So the grills, the ball bars, um, absolutely everything that's on here, I've gone ahead and done. Um, once again, I, I don't think that there's anything really that, that I would need to explain to people how to do it. Um, the only bit, obviously, these two squares here, uh, that's an option. Yeah. So if you're not putting on the ball bar, you can put in these two squares here. Other than that, everything's pretty self-explanatory, really. Um, there wasn't anything on there that was too too crazy. Um, so I will show you the body shell, shall I? The only other thing I did was I added the snorkel. Check this out, eh? Hey, 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 look at that. Woohoo! So we've gone for a nice metallic blue, which is a um, gone for a Tamiya. Uh, and like we said before, we've we've added the added the snorkel there. Uh, you can see I've done black all around the windows as well, so I had to mask all that stuff off, masked off all of the um, the silver bits, round at the lights as well. So we've we've got um, we've got the orange lenses and the red lenses. Um, yeah, everything came out pretty good, to be honest with you. Um, I did do the front grille is a is a darker grey, but it doesn't really show up too much. But yeah, it's a darker grey. Um, but yeah, it's come out. It's come out quite nice, to be honest with you. Um, I'm very happy with it. I did clear coat it afterwards as well, um, using a Tamiya um, clear coat. Uh, once again, with the art airbrush. Um, but yeah, I think it's I think it's turned out absolutely wicked. So what I'm going to do, I'm now going to whack this body on the car, uh, and then I can show you what it looks like all mounted up. And look at that! How about that, guys? So it's sitting sitting not too bad. I'm debating. I'm putting. Some of the uh, spacers on the rear suspension, just because that's where all the weight's at, so that's where my battery's at. Um, but apart from that, I mean, it's ooh, it's quite a beauty, to be honest with you. I was I wasn't planning on doing it this kind of colour. I was I was thinking about doing it cream, to be honest with you. Um, but I really like how it's come out. It's very very shiny as well with that with that clear coat that I've put on it. Um, everything inside's good, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's okay inside, a bit messy at the minute, but once again, when the parts turn up that I need um, from China, I'm, I'm going to change them over. So for now though, this is absolutely wicked, so, you know, our steering's working, uh, throttle's working, forwards and backwards, it's all going pretty good. Um, oh, so I'm looking forward, to be honest with you, to taking this out and seeing how good it is. Um, 
So hopefully, anyway, hopefully this has helped out, you know, with any questions or anything um, that needed to be answered. I hope I've answered them because this video is probably about 35 minutes long now, um, even with editing out as much as I can. So I'm sorry it's such a long video, guys, but, you know, I, I've done my best. <laughs> um, but anyway, that is the Pajero build. Finally built a Pajero. Woo hey After all these these years of, of doing Orlando's, this is my first Pajero. So I think it's been, been one hell of a success, to be honest with you. I love it. Wicked stuff. So anyway, I think it's time to end this video. Stay tuned for the next one. Um, we've got one coming very, very soon. Uh, hopefully by next week, perhaps, I'll have a, another car done. Fingers crossed, me. Um, but yes, once again, guys, thanks for watching, especially if you watched the whole entire of this video, and you are an absolute legend. Um, if you didn't watch it and you skipped for it, that's absolutely fine, guys, but please give me one of them. Um, and as always, please subscribe if you've not already. And if you have, then thank you very much. You guys are awesome. So take care now guys and I'll see you on the next one.